surely no one would expect a Godzilla movie to be one of the year's best romances. And yet, that's exactly what it was. Godzilla Minus One defied a few expectations, not just by being a Godzilla movie with more emphasis on character and story than the titular monster attraction, but by also being a genuine tearjerker of a film. Godzilla Minus One, being a Japanese movie, is profoundly heartfelt in ways that you wouldn't find in many Western movies, at least not nowadays. Specifically, the male-female centerpiece is, if not explicitly intimate nor romantically showy, a deciding factor in the movie's emotional impact. I'm not one for romances generally, the reason being that I'm not fond of the superficiality. Oftentimes, they're implanted in a film for mere audience appeasement, like part of a predetermined checklist. What does a girl have to do to go to bed with you? Try knocking on the door? And even in those films that place romances at the forefront, to where there's no doubting its consideration, the depiction is superficial. Western films love to make love a fleshy endeavor. Affection must be sensual, touchy, and sealed with a kiss. And it's really that lack of overt intimacy that grounds Godzilla Minus One in an unforgettable way. Admittedly, it is weird, as an American, to bear witness to an on-screen romance which is so tight-collared and never sealed with a kiss, not even to end the movie. And yet, it's an approach that I wholeheartedly appreciate. To showcase a mutual affection, which is expressed in what is said and done, rather than through the explicit act of attraction, is to make a connection which comes off as unbreakably strong. Anything else has a tendency to feel transactional beneath the spirit, done on urge. As humans, though we're hardwired to crave the carnal aspects of relationships, we understand that love is ultimately something higher. And, to my pleasant surprise, Godzilla Minus One is a refreshing reminder of that. I would say that this is uniquely Japanese, and in some ways it is. But, incidentally, I did watch the 1946 American film, The Best Years of Our Lives, recently, and came to find it remarkably similar to Godzilla Minus One in a few ways. Not just in its being a war film focused solely on the aftermath of World War II and the troubled homecoming of its heroes, but also in the heart-melting subtlety of its romance. The most touching story of the film is that of Homer Parrish, a young sailor who lost both of his hands in a tragic boating accident and wears hooks in their place, and how he comes to accept the ceaseless love of his swell girlfriend, Wilma. Like Godzilla Minus One, the best years of our lives, at least as far as Homer's story is concerned, soars in its ability to communicate love through selfless action, the small gestures that speak louder than any kiss. I'm lucky I have my elbows. Some of the boys don't, but I can't button them up. I'll do that, Homer. It's the back and forth between the constant, selfless offers of love and that persistent reluctance to embrace it that drives the total emotional impact of the story not so very different from Godzilla Minus One. That Wilma, being as young and prospective as she is, is still willing to marry Homer, somehow totally unfazed by his physical impairment, and no less dedicated to him for it, is a special treasure which pulls at heartstrings I forgot I had. And it's equally the acceptance of that love on the part of Homer which cements these touching moments as the undisputed highlights of the film. In similar fashion, Godzilla Minus One portrays the post-war environment as rich with opportunity. A nation is never quite ravaged so long as its people remain. As the best years of our lives begs the injured and the scarred to remove their shells and embrace without regret all of the love waiting for them through the character of Homer, Godzilla Minus One communicates the same theme through the troubled and haunted Shikshima a failed kamikaze pilot, reluctant to live a full life when given the chance, who learns over time to cherish the gift of family above all else. 
It's incredible how, with amazing grace, a pair of post-World War II films, each separated from the other by 80 years, and originating in opposite corners of the world, nonetheless wear the same coat of optimism, proclaiming with all their might that war does not have to be the end, only if we should let it be. The Best Years of Our Lives is the kind of treasured classic that I, under an older frame of mind, would have deemed unrepeatable. Fated to be a statement of the past, America is not as it was in 1946, to say the least. Modesty has evaporated, and decency is hardly considered today as it once was cherished 80 years ago. To see a film as lovely and well-adjusted as the best years of our lives, then, is to undergo both feelings of deep appreciation and sadness. The content of the movie is pure, healing, and yet so distant so long ago into the past that it seems fated to stay there. Nothing of that kind could be fostered in the media landscape of the 21st century. And while The Best Years of Our Lives is undoubtedly a film that couldn't have been made at any other time in history, and, like any movie, will never have its exact circumstances and artistic intent matched one for one, I think we've found something of a contemporary sibling. Godzilla. Minus one. Godzilla Minus One was a pleasant surprise in that it reminded me of the innocence of old Hollywood, not just in its remarkably optimistic roadmap of post-war reconstruction, but also in its simple, undecorated romance, a love that goes beneath the skin. Godzilla is no Titanic. There's hardly anything overt about its mainstay male-female relationship. Hell, they don't even make the move to get married. Yet, the implicit love of Godzilla Minus One, proven in actions and words more than fleshy sensuality, actually brings it a bar above many, many western swings at intimacy. The most beautiful facet of the romantic depiction is that it is neither superficial nor sacrificial. The two common tropes of American filmmaking, that a man must prove his love through either kissing his woman or dying for her sake, are wholly skirted in the plot of Godzilla Minus One. And by discarding that spectacular movie magic playbook, the film becomes truly one of the most human stories I've seen in years. I didn't cry watching Titanic, but I did cry at the close of Godzilla Minus One. Tears that, until recently, I would have thought to be reserved only for the classics. But this 2023 post-war monster drama hit proved me wrong in a substantial way. The latest entry in a Japanese film series, known for big action spectacle, miraculously managed to resurrect an innocence and a soul that Americans haven't been exposed to for a long, long while. So far, modern audiences approve. Overwhelmingly. I certainly do. And as for praise, I'd go so far as to say that even an audience from 1946 would weep watching Godzilla Minus One. 